taboo associated with challenging what others think uh, under the still convenient notion that all values are equal is simply not tenable. You are, in fact, partially responsible for the thoughts and values of others, and they are, in fact, responsible for yours. The most dangerous value we can have floating around the culture today, and I hope everyone can really listen carefully to this, the most dangerous value we have floating around the culture today is the idea that any of us have freedom of choice or the right to our own opinion, especially when it comes to issues of human survival and sustainability. We cannot choose, we can only align if we wish to survive and prosper, period. There is simply no such thing as freedom when the benchmark of scientific causality is brought into the equation with respect to any action or goal. The only caveat is the emergent uncertainty of the evolution of knowledge. How could we possibly be so arrogant to assume at any point in time in human history that we have ever been empirically right? It simply hasn't happened yet if you take the broad view. It wasn't until the past couple hundred years that the scientific method has barely been taken seriously with respect to human affairs and society. It's a benchmark. The self-correction attribute of science is what enables its evolution. There does seem to be a pre-existing logic, and this is important to note because people take this for granted, a logic, in fact, which dictates our reality and doesn't give a damn what we think of it and impose upon it. It appears we can either be vulnerable and align as best we can and engage this harmony, or we can walk against it, fight it to our personal and social disadvantage. Is there really any freedom to how we organize our economy on a finite planet if the goal is to create the most efficient, sustainable means of production, distribution, and regeneration? No, there isn't. Industry is a technical process, a calculation problem where the variables of human needs, physical science, and earthly resources are brought into a single regulatory equation, if you will. The properties of our resources can be scientifically quantified now, strategically assessed as far as their purpose, strategically oriented as far as the design in the most logical manner, distributed through the exact same logic of pure efficiency. We have globalization on this planet. What the hell are we doing? We're taking stuff from all over the world, exploiting labor, moving it around, wasting tons of energy, when we could easily develop production methods in local communities where you save x-fold amount of energy, the distance between elements moving is, is x-fold less. Uh, it's insane. But yet, the system perpetuates that. That's for a larger order of subject that I don't have time to go into. We could strategically orient industry, and it's self-evident as we do based on the physics of our reality and where things are. We could enable an efficiency never known before. It becomes self-evident. And why would we possibly, with regard to sustainability, want to do anything less? As counterintuitive and culturally obtuse as it may seem, there is no freedom or opinion in our technical reality. There is only the most efficient way up until now and the rest is simply inefficient. The definition of economy in Greek means management of a household. A reduction of waste and maximized efficiency is inherent in this premise. Is this the way our current free market system is operating? What drives a global economy? Consumption, and the more the better. More consumption means more jobs, better GDP, and hence enabling more consumption through purchasing power that's enabled. Is that efficient? Shouldn't preservation and reducing waste be the basis of an economy on a finite planet by definition? How can an economy based on the need for constant growth and turnover, and even, even an economy based on constant need for employment, be economizing anything at all? Then there's this thing called cost efficiency. Cost efficiency demands cutting expenses to remain competitive in the marketplace. Every single product created by any corporation today, without exception, is immediately inferior by design for the market requirement to cut creation costs in favor of lowering the output purchasing price to maintain a competitive edge automatically reduces the quality of any given item by default. It is impossible to create the strategically best, long-lasting anything in our society and this translates into outrageous amounts of wasted resources. 
Likewise, the same mechanism is also reinforcing environmental disregard, depletion and pollution. There's everyone trying to save money. Why are they, you think they're going to really care about the environment? The logic is against it. We see this constant in the world today among many, many other issues I could list. In fact, if you take a moment to really step back and think about this, not only is this inefficiency a characteristic of the market model, it's actually the fundamental driver. Having clean, say, unpolluted water in your home might seem like a nice thing and gesture, but the fact that money is not being exchanged for that is anathema to the economic sustainability that we've come to understand. So more pollution means more profit, more disease means more jobs ad infinitum. In fact, I would go so far to say, as pointed out here, that sustainability, efficiency, and preservation empirically are the enemies of our economic system, and that's unfortunately the firm reality. Those out there who talk about a green economy or the like, as though there's such a thing that could possibly exist in this system, posing solutions within this structural order, such as renewable energies, energy credits, carbon footprint stuff, or the like, they are not understanding what's actually at work here. You cannot have a true green or even close to whatever you could consider a sustainable economy in the market model of economics. It is technically impossible. The system would fail if we ever wanted to operate on a truly technical sustainable level. For the system is in fact fueled by the exact opposite set of mechanics. I would even go so far to challenge for those out there that um, basically at this stage are not in favor of the complete abolition of the market economy as the solution to the destruction of our environment, not to mention the collapse of the social order itself we are seeing, while working to replace this system with a truly technical approach for resource management, proper scientific allocation, seeking the highest level of efficiency possible at every turn in production and distribution for maximum sustainability, which is a technical distinction, including proper allocation of labor and everything else, really just engaging in patchwork. It's not going to do anything in the long run. And we're wasting time because time is literally running out. We have based our economy on outdated notions of human behavior and convoluted notions of supposed freedom and ignored the true technical reality, true environmental reality that actually supports and sustains our lives and creates good public health. This realization that our true economic benchmark is science and hence the self-evident calculation requirement needed to streamline our efficiency inherently voids the entire basis again of free market economics itself. I can't reiterate that enough. For it simply makes zero technical sense scientifically and is in fact provably now working against our survival and accelerating. Let's take a quantum leap outside of our traditional assumptions for a moment. What does the political institution and hence government really do? Why do we even have it? They work to compensate for the inefficiency of the economy. That's it. That's the only reason they're there. When people are not getting their needs met, they often resort to so-called crime. So government invents laws to silence those victims of the economic efficiency. Likewise, if we need resources being held in another sovereign nation, aka region of the planet, and we are not economically getting along with them, we engage in war to steal those resources. Not to mention protect ourselves from others who might want to steal ours. There is no war in history that has not been based upon resource acquisition or protection. Likewise, the world's divided into gangs. You ever notice that? We still have these things called countries. We still assume a socially Darwin Darwinistic pretense with the very existence of these nation states, not to mention the divisive patriotic value distortions that are born out of it. Are countries relevant in technical terms? How could we possibly define them outside of our opinions? A. All humans share the same basic needs. And B, the resources that we all need have no idea what a country is. And they are dispersed everywhere on this planet in one single unified ecosystem. If there's anything positive that came out of the US and Russian 
Cold War that almost triggered, triggered complete nuclear disaster decades ago. It was the realization that radiation fallout in nuclear winter never heard of countries, flags, or sovereignty. Just as the pollution from the Japanese power plants that melted down a while back, it didn't need passports to cross over to other countries' atmospheres. I hope my point is clear. The fact is, there is only and can only be one global economy. And hence, there is only one and can only be one global society for our economic premise is what defines us. And that's what our survival is. The socio-economic system of our time is as archaic, dogmatically religious, and pseudo-scientific as any dogmatic religious belief. They are completely decoupled from the benchmark of our scientific emergent reality, which is being denied, held in place by traditional, non-emergent institutions, which, mark my words, will be what destroys life on this planet as we know it, if the multi-dimensional reality that is springing up is not realized and brought to the surface quickly. The central problem we face is that the economic system is actually still systematically reinforcing itself, continuing to hold this paradigm in place by the ongoing values and actions of the masses who do not see the true source of the problem because they're trapped inside of it, and they are accelerating its effects. For example, if anyone out there frames their sense of leadership or success based on money or a claim, you have a rude awakening coming to you. And I don't blame them and don't put them down, but I hope, I hope this definition can eventually change. What is true success? Is success how well you manage your company? sell a book, gain a profit, or anything that engages the current socioeconomic paradigm? If you agree with what I have just described with respect to the economic system, those focusing on short-term material success might very well be assisting in their own long-term failure and demise, for they are only perpetuating a detrimental social system in the end that, as I said before, will get the best of all of us if it isn't stopped. Shouldn't true success be your ability to adapt to the emergence of new information, improving your relationship with the natural order benchmark that we've spoken of? Is there really anything else that could possibly define success in the broadest possible terms? Proper alignment with whatever reality happens to be advancing itself and you being with it? Do our this relationships and marriages and banks, bank accounts and even our children, our status, our acclaim really mean anything when it's stepped back the larger order of what it means to relate to the world that you live in? All acts of commerce are inherently corrupt. If you define corruption as deprivation, exploitation, or abuse, every time you mark up a value on a good you sell or cut corners to save money, you are engaging in deprivation, exploitation, and abuse by its systemic causal effect and intrinsic rationale. That is the behavior our social system requires to continue. And that distortion is currently masked as normality. When I look at the world today with, say, one person dying every three seconds unnecessarily, when I look at the fact that there are, in truth, based on UN distinctions of human trafficking and what slavery means, there are today more slaves in the world than ever before in human history. When I speak to the truth of the fact that every single life support system is in decline due to resource exploitation, equal exploitation that goes on the human side, applied to the abuse of the topsoil, abuse to everything that we're doing, to destruction of water resources. This is a dramatic failure that we're seeing across the board, destroying public health and destroying ecological health.